Today I'm going to be doing an enzyme assay to look at the levels of extracellular enzymes within a soil sample. There are two types of assays that can be done, a fluorometric assay or a colorimetric assay. I'm going to be looking at a colorimetric assay, um, specifically at the enzyme phenyl oxidase. So what I've done to start is put 0.5 grams of soil in a 125 ml plastic bottle. And I've also added about 50 glass beads inside. I am going to start by adding a buffer. This buffer is pHed to five to most resemble the pH of a soil sample. I'm going to add about 50, 50 mils of that and these are then going to be put on a shaker. The glass beads within the sample will cause the soil particles to break up and hopefully release any um, enzymes that are held within the soil particles. I have this one that's been shaking for an hour and I've also added an additional 50 mils of the buffer so I now have 100 mils of the buffer with the 0.5 grams of soil. So what I'm going to do to begin is set up my plate for my assay. And what I have is a 96 well clear plate. So I have labeled my plate along the bottom here with what's going to be going in each well or each row of wells. I have 12 rows of eight, so each sample is replicated. Um, the eight times or each row. So what I have is substrate and then I'm going to be adding the soil background as well as two rows for my soil assay. The first row is going to have the DOPA or the substrate which is the substrate for the phenyl oxidase assay. So I'll take my DOPA, pour it into this trough and this first row is a negative control. I'm ensuring that I don't get any color change in the substrate because any color change that comes afterwards I want to be due to the enzyme, the phenyl oxidase acting on the DOPA and not the, the DOPA itself. So I add 50 microliters to each of the wells within the row. The next row that I will be using will be the soil. So I'm going to take my soil that I've prepared, again put it into the trough. And I'll be using a wide mouth tip for this so that I can get up some of the soil particles within the solution. And I'm going to be putting in 200 microliters and I'm going to have three rows with this. One that's going to be a negative control just to see if my soil changes color and then two that are actually the assay. These will eventually be mixed with the DOPA solution. So I will proceed along the plate with those. I then will be taking my buffer And I'd like to have 250 microliters in each well. So those negative controls that I mentioned earlier that have the, um, just the soil are going to have an additional 50 microliters of buffer. and I call that my soil background. So I just add that buffer to the 200 microliters of 
soil. And then as I'm ready to start the assay, I go back to the DOPA and I'm going to add 50 microliters of DOPA to those two rows of the soil assay. So to the two rows of 200 microliters of soil. Put my lid on my plate. And my assay will now start. The phenyl oxidase assay runs for 18 hours, so I will put my plate at room temperature in the dark. DOPA reacts with light, so it's best that it's in the dark. And when I'm done, I will come back and read the plate in the plate reader and get my enzyme levels. After the 18 hour incubation, I have removed my DOPA plate from the dark. And you can see in the first row here, we have very clear color. This represents the DOPA with the buffer, so there's no activity or color change in that. In the next row, I have soil buffer, soil and buffer. And so this, there's a little bit of color, but the soil did have a color to it, so that's okay. And in the two following rows, we have soil plus DOPA. And you can see that this is a much darker color than the initial row of lighter brown. So there is phenyl oxidase activity in this soil sample. So I'm going to add the plate to the plate reader. And this will give me an idea of how much phenyl oxidase activity I have. So what it, the plate reader's done has used a light at a specific wavelength to read the color of each well. It's come back with a set of numbers representing the color change within the well. So for my first row, which represents the negative control or the DOPA with the soil buffer, my numbers are all at about 0 0.05. This means that there's very little color in those wells, which is what we expected because we didn't want the DOPA to change color. In the next row, we have just soil with the buffer. So this is again a negative control. And there is a bit more color than the DOPA. So we're at about one um, for all of these, for this entire row. So we did have color with our soil, so this is okay. In the next two rows, we have about 1.15. These are the rows that represent the DOPA plus soil. So there was phenyl oxidase activity as there is a darker color or a higher number within these rows. So this lets me know that there was phenyl oxidase activity within my soil. Um, the enzyme assay will let me know how much activity there is per gram of soil per hour. So I know that the soil that I have has phenyl oxidase, which is capable of breaking down lignin and giving me further substrates.